that brings us to our presentations and discussion, which this week is our elementary program update. Yeah, so um, if, if we could title this presentation, I think Lisa took the words out of my mouth, silver linings. And uh, when we uh, met with the three elementary principals who have, who have now joined us, um, we really wanted to share with the board and the community um, what worked this year, what some of the takeaways were, and what we might be able to, what we learned this year out of necessity that might be part of our culture moving forward. Um, and uh, we really allowed Donna and Cindy and Josh to um, think about their experiences this year, uh, identify some successes, identify opportunities for improvement in terms of uh, what COVID taught us. And then uh, in, in the middle here, Margaret and Lisa will share a little bit about the elementary program for next year. There are things that, that we have talked about, including uh, 10 minutes ago, um, but wanted to be able to uh, provide the community with an update on, on next year and how we bridge that gap. Um, before we officially get started, I, I wanna make sure that I commend um, Donna, Josh, and Cindy. Um, we have always worked well together. Uh, and we have worked even more closely and even better this year with text messages and phone calls. Uh, I was on the phone. And I was trying to think it was either Donna or Josh. We were talking on New Year's Eve or Thanksgiving, one or the other, uh, about COVID-related issues and quarantining and positive test results. And um, they have always uh, been, been accessible, um, but, but they have been super accessible because um, we had a lot of important decisions to make and certainly a lot of important work to do uh, during this year that was uh, unlike any other and we hope that it is remains unlike any other going forward. So uh, we wanted to provide the, the board and the community an update on um, opportunities uh, or successful opportunities this year as well as how we'll transition hopefully to an, a more normal environment next year. So they have divided up the slides and we'll uh, let uh, Donna, Josh and Cindy take it from here. Greg, go ahead, you can uh, move to the next slide. So good evening, everybody. I'm going to start and obviously remote instruction was a huge part of this year. We had many students at the elementary level who were fully remote for the entire year. And it was also a big part of instruction for the in-person students who often had to quarantine and do a lot more work online than what they had been used to doing previously. So we just wanted to talk a little bit about what that looked like this year and, and how successful we, we felt that was. The instruction certainly evolved as the year went on and teachers learned about new programs and new formats that they could use such as Kami and Seesaw. And they were able to provide a lot of unique and innovative methods of instruction using, using these formats and really engage the kids in online learning. They were able to use um, programs such as Padlet and Flipgrid where the kids could show what they were learning and share with their peers and with their teachers as they, as they were going through different content. We also had to learn about the balance between screen time and non-screen time. And you know, especially for those fully remote kids, we wanted to give them opportunities to be off screen as well. So the teachers were sure to provide them with work that they could do independently off screen and then share back later with, with their classmate, classmates. Breakout rooms became an essential tool for teachers as they would provide you know, the um, traditional mini lesson through the, for the whole class and then break into small groups. And the teacher could move from breakout room to breakout room as the students worked with each other and check on their learning and, and provide them with feedback. We were able to add live specials uh, a little ways into the school year for art and for music so that those teachers were providing some live instruction and then giving the students an opportunity to have some non-screen time and do some, some work independently and, and share back later. The physical education teachers shared different resources and programs that the students could use and access online. It was a little harder to do live physical education classes, but there were resources there for, for the students to use and to engage with. We also provided the remote families with opportunities to pick up throughout the year different resources that they could use at home, whether it was the math workbooks or leveled readers or whiteboards. 
so that they could engage with the teachers from home using materials that their in-person peers were also using throughout the year. And the whiteboards became a really great tool for the remote teachers. It's, the kids could write on their whiteboards, you know, an answer to a question that the teacher was asking and hold it up and the teacher could quickly glance at her screen and, and get feedback from everybody at the same time, get information on, on their learning and give them feedback all together. So that became a great tool for them. We have the uh, Go Guardian program, which the administrators use to monitor students who might be searching inappropriate content on the internet, but the teachers were able to use it to monitor the students as they worked. So they could give an assignment and they could monitor what the student was working on, whether it was on Seesaw or Cami or just in Google Classroom and see the progress that the students were making and then you know, provide them with feedback or remind them to get back on track or whatever the case, case would be. So that was a, a useful tool as well. And as we've gotten into the warmer weather, we've been finding opportunities to invite some of the remote students to the schools for different initiatives. I know at Frank G, they had some assemblies outdoors that the remote students were able to participate in. We've had a lot of virtual programs at all three schools that the remote students have participated in as well. We have field days coming up. Josh had his already, and I believe Donna's is coming up and, and mine's next week. So we're trying to make sure all the students are included and that the remote students have experiences that are similar to those of the in-person students. Any questions before I go to the next slide? Okay, you can go to the next one, please. Thank you. So one of the takeaways was just the importance of working together, as Joe said before. The, it was really important for Josh and Donna and I to work together this year because we were sharing teachers. And I might have been supervising one teacher whose homeschool was Frank G, but half her students were at BB. So if issues arose or a parent called, we had to really talk to each other before deciding you know, who was going to address the issue and how it was going to be addressed. And although, as Joe said, we always work together and work collaborative, collaboratively, this year it was even more important. And, um, you know, I think we, we did that very, very well. I also had the chance, and I know Josh and Donna did too, to get to know different teachers that we hadn't necessarily worked with before. I was assigned four teachers to supervise who weren't assigned to Furnace Woods, but they were remote teachers. So I got to visit their remote classrooms throughout the year and work with them and really get to know them, which was great. And all of this, you know, collaboration will certainly provide us with, um, a starting point as we move forward and start planning, you know, for 2022 and the Princeton plans. So we've already made some additional connections that we may not have made if we hadn't had to go through this experience this year. So that's my part. Any questions before we let Cindy go? All right. Hi, everybody. How are you? Okay, so yes, this was a two years to remember, I must admit. And um, we talk about flexibility in education. This was the year to do it and communication at its fullest. And like we said, and Joe started to say, there was never a holiday or a weekend that went by where we were having some kind of communication either with him or especially my nurse and our nurses and secretarial teams. It was 24 seven um, weekends discussing what we were gonna do next. At, at a moment's call, we were getting calls uh, regarding a case of COVID, but our role was to always limit the amount of people that were out. We didn't want to bring the whole school down. We try to keep that as minimal as possible so we wanted to make sure that we had clear attendance being taken at all times in the area where the students were, master schedules constantly readily available, buses re readily, know who was on it, what day and how, attendance being taken on and off buses so that we could just limit the amount of kids that we needed to quarantine if we had to do it. And so much kudos to our nurses, and our secretaries who I don't think they knew what a Saturday or Sunday was. They just didn't because it was an hour at least to notify the parents and at least another hour and a half to make sure that the community knew right away 
that we had reached everybody and everybody else could just go about their business. So that intensity and getting the report to the, um, to the Department of Health very quickly, as quickly as possible, um, was something that was always in the forefront. And the teaming that went into it was just amazing. And the setup that we all did to make sure we had all the information. Infinite Campus was a great help. And we also had to use some paper and pencil because nothing like going on a trip to Rhode Island and getting that call. We got a call, pull over to the side of the road and start calling 25 kids because time is not something that could stand still or wait. But we did develop a lot of attendance procedures. And not only did we mark kids absent, we wanted to know why they were absent. So what would happen is we had a TA set up and if a student wasn't remote and wasn't on remote at the time, I would get a phone call. We didn't want the teachers to have to make the phone calls. We wanted them focused on the studying and the working with the kids hand in hand. And we would get on the phone with the parents saying, hey, where's Billy? And in some cases, I know I didn't, I'm sure the other ones did. We were the wake up calls for some of the students that who had parents at the job already and needed that extra get out of the pajamas and let's get to work. So we were doing a lot of that also, but it was great because the kids got to see us and be with us. So it wasn't feeling like they were still in that place where no one really, really was connected except to give the work. Um, there were times when not the whole school, most of the time, the whole school was not quarantined. So for those that were quarantined, we set up some teaching assistant and teacher time support. so They could go in and check in with the students that were quarantined, let's say the bus if their whole class wasn't, and they could run the Google slides that they needed to learn. And so those children that were on those 10 days and at one time, 14 days, what an enormous amount of time, we didn't want them to lose that, that chunk. So what we did was we had our teachers and our TAs working together to kind of check in if 20 minutes here, 20 minutes this, that, you know, about three times for 20 minutes. We had that so the kids will at least get an hour and a half if they were quarantined at home due to our reasons. If kids were quarantined due to the fact that they decided to take a trip, well, then that was a little bit of a different area. Um, relationships between students and parents were even stronger than ever. Um, we all three principals together worked to make sure that the parents still valued that even though we were remote, this instruction was just as important as being in the classroom. And we tried to make sure that everyone understood that we're still moving forward with curriculum. We're gonna do it a little different, deliver it a little different, but it's still there for us. Uh, attending Google Classrooms were absolutely fantastic. I'm sure Josh and Cindy would agree with me because you just could pop in and pop out at any time, read a story, because you didn't have sometimes all the other things going on. And it was nice to just kind of go in and go out of classrooms three, four times a day and be part of the instruction, which we all love to do. Even though we've left the classroom, there's not a principal I know that doesn't love to be in the classroom. So that was an exciting part of that also. And let me tell you, the children, I know we had concerns, what's gonna happen with the masks, what's gonna happen with the social distancing, everything went smoothly. We had great plans in, in, in fact, Josh and Cindy and I ran down and worked at what are we gonna do with playground equipment? What are we gonna do in the playground? We don't wanna be yelling at children saying, put your mask on and do this. It was always, hey guys, this is how we have to do it. This is why we had to do it. And the parents were so amazing in that they were helping us explain it to them before they got to school. So it was a wonderful transition. We adjusted, we now have music, I know for me, right outside my office every day. I know the Erie Canal by heart and the 50 states. I cannot express how much I've learned in music class. We have picnic tables outside so children are dining outside and enjoying the outside. They could sit on their blankets or the wonderful picnic tables that we have in all three of the buildings. So the kids are having book talks outside. It's, it's not at all what we thought it was going to be. No one's fearful, everyone. We've actually seen a surge of children coming back and coming into the schools back and returning from remote. So that's a good feeling too, as we move for that. And we've been, like Cindy said, we've invited them in for the bubble bus and ice cream and all that kind of stuff 
so that they're getting that transition ready for September and all those faces are ready to go. So that's some of the improvements. Turn and talks, small groups haven't been eliminated. Absolutely not. On remote, we have our re small remote groups that they can go into breakout rooms and in classrooms. Teachers have strategically placed kids in six feet apart where they could turn and talk. And sometimes they could shoot messages, email each other across the classroom as they kind of like blog and talk about different subjects. So that has not hindered us at all. You can go to the next slide. Like I said, you know, and I'm sure Josh and, and Cynthia will um, also agree with me. We knew our kids, we know who they are. We've grown up with them over these past couple of years and the relationships were critical. We met with our teachers when we were full remote to now, weekly when we were full remote, if not three, four times a week, just to see like who we're having problems with, who, who needs additional emotional support. Parents knew us, they, we tied them even with teachers beyond their own teachers at this time, because we knew where our hotspots were. And sometimes we had some surprises, but quickly our, our resource people, our psychologists and social workers met with those kids, parents reached out to us and we were able to always create that communication. So kids didn't feel alone. And we put that out there many times. So me going into Google Classrooms, Josh and Cynthia, we could watch and see where the kids were and how they were looking also on the screen, which was a big piece to that. Technology needs, awesome. Laura really blew it out of the water. She got those computers out to us. There was no doubt. We stood there for hours and we handed them out. It was great to see the kids. We had issues, Laura corrected it right away and jumped right on. If we needed anything instructionally, Margaret was there for us. She just jumped in, got us resources upon resources and got resources. And Lisa and her social workers and psychologists, we all were some phenomenal team and we were moving forward. Yes, it was 24 seven. Yes, it was long hours and long days, seven to sometimes 11 o'clock at night, five days a week. But you know what? It was well worth it. And it really spilled out that we are head HUD and nothing takes us down. I'm done. Thank you, Donna. I had to laugh when you said the kids were texting across the classroom because of course, you know- Legally. <laughs> no, no, I know that. But that's, of course, you know, our kids in the living room with their friends they're like texting each other. So they're just using the technology the way they are now using the technology, I guess. Exactly. Yeah. Any questions? Um, I did not have any questions, but, you know, I think you spelled it out really well. The, the teaching team, you guys did a phenomenal job this year where we started out the beginning of the year. Thinking back to where we were last March, April, and to where we are now with our classrooms and with the teaching and the satisfaction of the parents and the kids, of course, everybody is really looking forward to getting back together in classrooms in a more normal situation, but the growth this year has been phenomenal. And I can only schools. add to this. I have never seen, I mean, teachers are always reflective, but no matter how many times I could convince them that you doing an outstanding job, they, all they could say is, I got to do more. I got to do more. I got to do more. And that was just such a swell to my heart. So you know what? What a bang up teams. I can't say enough about them. Does anybody else have any questions? All right. Looks like you did a great job. Josh, thanks. you're up. <laughs> all right. Thanks. And well done, Don and Cindy. Um, this one is about supporting one another, and I'm going to build off Donna's last slide where it said every person. We couldn't have got through these times without every single, you know, unit member, um, our, our office staff, the nursing staff, the kitchen, the clerical, security, TAs, aides, monitor, you know, teachers. Everybody was working together on how to make this successful um, from the safety aspects to the mental health and, um, you know, I just don't want to forget any single crew member because it was a, a team effort across all the schools in our district. Our mental health team did a great job working with the classrooms, um, lessons on, you know, how to cope, mindfulness, how to express themselves, talk about feelings, gratitude, you know, 
bully prevention strategies and skills. Um, in the classrooms, there were still those greetings. Um, you know, just like Donna said, there was still turn in talks. We still did the, you know, meet everybody outside, but it wasn't physical. It was from a space, you know, air high fives, waving, um, and everyone made it as normal as possible. I would say Google Meets have been terrific. We've had turnouts improve for parent teacher conferences, PTA meetings, committee meetings, you know, whether it's our PBIS, RTI team, safety, CSE, meetings like this. Um, we've had people from the ball field, you know, calling in. We've had people remoting from all sorts, so, you know, you know, whispering as they're putting their kids to bed, but still trying to hear what's going on in the schools. Um, so that has been great. Um, and really the next slide, Greg, if you want to go to the next one, expands on that. One of our takeaways is to continue what's been working. How do we include more people? Um, we want to get away from the fact that the, you know, involvement only means showing up at a PTA meeting. That's far from true. There are so many other ways you can contribute. Um, it could be an idea. It could be something tangible. It could just be that support and relationship with the teacher back and forth. Um, we've included students in assemblies a variety of ways. There are different ways to include people from around the world using remote, you know, Google Meet, Zooms, and different technologies. Um, I know pledges announcements have been done this year, and we'll continue to be creative about ways to do that. Um, and again, we want to just continue that increased participation, um, involvement, and awareness of what's going on at our schools. That was it for me. Any questions on supporting one another? Nope, I'd like to just echo again, Josh, thanks for all your hard work this year. Um, you know, all of those things are such wonderful, positive things. Uh, a lot of them were brought up as well at the Westchester Putnam meeting around the, around the area, around Westchester Putnam area from many different schools. But I think we did an exceptional job and uh, thanks to the support. And I, I agree that there has been a lot more participation with some of these live streams and Zoom meetings and things. So it would be great to continue to incorporate that going forward. Anybody else have questions, comments? I'll just jump in real quick. Um, you know, it was it was Margaret and and Lisa working with Donna, Cindy, and Josh to make sure that we could create an environment for all elementary kids to come every day if they chose to. We are one of very, very, very few districts that if parents chose to bring their send their children in every day, that we could accommodate them. Um, and not just accommodate, meaning have them in school, but have the same teacher, certified teacher, work with them all day, every day. Um, that was really, really, really important. And that team had to make some uh, really tough executive decisions. And I'm talking about decisions like, okay, the reading rug's got to go, or these, these bookshelves, or this, you know, extra teacher desk, or you name it, in order to, to create space, um, because that was a priority from them. The priority was to try to get as many kids back in the school um, as often as possible, um, while families chose a, a remote model. And um, again, that all transpired from August 7th until you know, September 5th, because it was on August 7th. I'll remember, of course, it was on uh, late in the week. I'm pretty certain it was a Friday when the governor said, yeah, you know, families don't want to send their kids in. The district will have a remote model. Good luck. Um, so this team, um, yeah, we did the impossible and, and, and every school district did. They did what they, what they believed they needed to do to be successful. But this team did the impossible. We built an entirely new school system in person and virtually uh, in the matter of weeks. And, and it was intense and it was stressful. Um, and we had to drop everything frequently in order to make sure we got the job done and make sure as Donna said, we responded to COVID and health related matters. Um, you know, it, it was, I felt horrible texting everyone saying, hey, you have a minute to talk or when they would email or call me because wherever we were, Donna was exactly right. I was on the phone with her. Um, you know, she was trying to have vacation, uh, but we stopped what we were doing and we abandoned our, our families and our plans in order to um, do the right thing. So um, while we hope we don't have another year like this, um, thank goodness we have the team that we have 
uh, and the teachers and the and the faculty that we have in all three schools because this was would absolutely not be possible without everyone being uh, on the same page and understanding that we've got to we've got to do right by kids in a, a really tough and uncomfortable situation. Absolutely, and and that team building doesn't happen overnight. There was a good foundation there already of collaboration. So, kudos to everybody. Um, any other comments from the board? Okay. Joe, what's next? Is that it? I saw some more, there were some more slides earlier. Were those taken away, the uh, priorities? Ah, oh, there we go. Joe, you're muted. I've got two computers. Yes, that was the last slide with Cindy, Don, and Josh. So thank you. Um, so now we pivot to, okay, next year, right? We've talked a lot about uh, getting back to normal and um, how we reintroduce students, whether they were part of our 200 students who were remote. Um, so we'll talk a little bit about uh, supporting kids after the pandemic and then a little bit more on social emotional support. So I'll let Margaret take it from here. Okay, next slide, Greg. Thanks. So we spoke briefly about this a few minutes ago when um, Joe was talking about the American Rescue Plan funding, um, which is paying for a good deal of this. Um, again, the bridge program uh, for grades two and three, this is targeted at BV and Frank G, not arbitrarily, but based on student performance. So Along with the three principles, we look at cutoffs and expectations and we identify students who are uh, not doing as well as we would have hoped. Uh, we attribute that to the uh, instructional upset over the past 18 months. Um, and recently, uh, Donna, myself, Josh, and the teachers who will be actually delivering the program had an opportunity to meet and discuss our expectations, our instructional plan, um, I know that Donna and Josh will do an amazing job supporting them in the building next year, um, along with some of our special ed colleagues who are experts in this and will serve to guide us along. So there'll be a tremendous amount of collaboration and a lot of progress monitoring to make sure that these kiddos are getting where we would like them to be, where they need to be, and then you know, getting them back in uh, mainstream instruction for the full day. They will, they will be part of their homeroom classroom during this process. Uh, the re we talked about the opportunity that the funds are providing for us to reduce class sizes. Um, it's much, much easier as a classroom teacher when you have fewer students that you can dedicate more time to. You know, time is the, uh, the only variable that we cannot um, do anything with. Our day is our day, but how can we allow teachers the maximum amount of powerful instructional time during those hours? And this is one way to do that. So we have the opportunity to put those people in place for one year, and I do believe that it will make a difference for our kids. The professional learning continues. We've had a very robust program at elementary. It is already paying dividends and seeing fewer kids leaving the room for AIS support. So we will continue where we left off. We did continue this year, but again, there's nothing like being in person with one another. So I know that our consultants are looking forward to returning in person. They've done yeoman's work uh, on Zoom and Google Meet um, and picking up where we left off and you know, fine tuning some of that work. And then reading recovery, which as I said, is a very well-researched program um, targeted at first graders who are um, at risk in reading. Uh, it is um, the training that is being paid for with the American Rescue Funds. The staff is already existing, so it is not new teachers. It is a teacher who stepped up and said, I would like to be able to do this for the district, and so that teacher will be trained to do so. Uh, again, like everyone else, um, we really lived the saying, it takes a village, and uh, I think we did it very well. I'm very proud of all of my colleagues. Uh, a special shout out to all of our AIS math and reading teachers that we pushed into classrooms <laughs> really without very much notice, just said, oh, you're going to be a fourth grade teacher this year. And um, to their credit, they went willingly and really almost to 
100%. People this year, when I called or I emailed said, what do you need me to do? And that was the only way that we could do, as Joe said, the right thing for kids was for everybody to feel that we were in this together, however hard it was going to be, and we could get through this together as long as we maintain that attitude. So I want to thank everybody. I don't want to call you out by name because I'll absolutely forget somebody just like the folks do in their awards acceptance speeches, and then they never hear the end of it. So everyone that we worked with this year, uh, I have the utmost appreciation and respect for your work ethic and your contributions to the success that we've experienced. And most importantly, to the success our kids have experienced. So I think that's my only slide and I think it's Lisa's turn now. I have to echo uh, and just feed off Margaret just a little bit because this year my special ed teachers actually stepped up and they became classroom teachers as well. And for some of them, it was brand new. Others of them just jumped in. We've made some creative programs and our parents were so flexible and we were able to really do unique and out of the box thinking. And thank you, thank you to all the principals as well because they were willing to think outside of the box and they sometimes went much bigger and we had to kind of rein them in a little. So I just, you know, I think we just really have to commend all of our staff um, because it was a long year. It is a long year and, um, I know they're ready for a little R and R as well. So, um, talked a couple weeks ago about social emotional um, support that we've done, and of course, Josh had a, a great conversation. And um, one of the things that we are doing next year at the elementary level, so we're only focused on elementary, is we're going to continue our DBT at the elementary school. It'll be year two, uh, year one. Speaking to our team and our um, consultant from CBC, it's been very successful. Second step, we'll reintegrate it back into the classrooms. I know um, Ms. Polito took a lot on this year, but she'll work collaboratively with the classroom teachers and we'll get that up and running again in full force. Um, Ms. Polito again has really done some small groups. Uh, she wants to continue the lunch groups. She has a mindful group, a friendship group, family cha changes and executive functioning is something she wants to start next year for the younger kids. So continuing this and allowing kids to have an area to express concerns, to share emotions is really important. And I think one of the things that's very exciting for me at the elementary is a book club. I'm a big reader and she really wants to do some SEL book clubs, whether it's during lunch or whether um, it might be that before school time or after school time when she gets a little time with the kids. For our staff, we are actually investigating the second steps for staff, which really incorporates um, leader training. So it's it's the principals getting some training on how to incorporate this into their faculty meetings as a whole group. And then throughout the month, there's some reflections in small groups, whether it's by grade level, however they choose to break it up. Um, but that is definitely something we have been thinking about because um, Dr. Wynn and Ms. Marino and Ms. Polito was, were running some like staff check-ins virtuals where they left some time open where people could just come in and just kind of share what they were doing. So this is something that um, we felt that we should investigate and they'll talk about building trust, managing stress, um, advancing equity and developing efficacy. So that's an important piece as we transition back um, and get our students back to school, but also getting our staff in the right frame of mind and prepping them to be successful during the school year. All right, does anybody have any questions? Thank you, Lisa. I saw a hand raised and then it went back down before I could, see. oh, Lori, there you are, sorry. It, it's me, Carol, yes. Um, yes I, know we have these, I know we have these, I'm sorry, I'm in the car. Everybody, I, I apologize, I was in exec and then I had to attend a board meeting at the school where I teach and I'm back. So my question, I have two questions. We have all these like really great programs going on right now, like bridge and reading recovery, et cetera. Are they going to stay as the class sizes um, come back to normal size? So reading recovery um, is not dependent on class size. Think of it okay, as good. another version of AIS reading, but just targeted for first graders. 
Um, okay. the bridge classes we do expect will go away. So as we come away from um, closing the gaps that may have occurred during the up and down of instruction and the in and out of being in school and out of school, we hope that our kids will be back where we need them to be and we will collapse those sections. Okay, um, it's something, something different. How, thank you very much, Margaret. What happens, um, I don't know what I, I have to think about what I want to ask and how I want how I want to ask the next question. So I, I'll come back. My other question is, um, how are how are people supposed to do their comments this evening? Again, my apologies, because I wasn't here at the beginning of public session. So Margaret, this is not for you, I guess it's for Carol. How are the public supposed to give their comments tonight? And I apologize if you have already gone over that. I have, because of our technical issues tonight, we're only doing comments on our agenda items and they can be emailed to Carmen and she will read them, unfortunately. Any comments for non-agenda items, we're gonna hold till next week. If it's okay. something that they want the board to know urgently, they can email the board in the meanwhile, or not next week, but next meeting, I should have said, on uh, June okay. 16th. And at that point, at the June 16th meeting, hopefully we will be in person and hopefully they will be able to come and give their comments in person at that meeting. But again, if it's something urgent they need to contact the board about, in the meanwhile, they can do so via email. Okay, I, I apologize if you already said that at the beginning, I just wanted to know. <laughs> It does not hurt to say it more than once, so I'm quite happy to reiterate. Okay, thank you. Lori, did you think of your other question? I know you had something else you wanted to ask. I did not yet. I will. I will. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. All right, so were there okay. any other questions from the board? All right, Lori, we're back to you and then we're ready to move on to our public comment section. Back to me for what? Uh, I thought you had another question to ask, but if you're, no, if you're what, set, then what, we can go to audience comments. Yeah, that's fine. When I think of it, I have a lot of this stuff stuck on it. When I think of it, I will uh, again ask, okay? Okay. Thanks. All right. So thank you, everybody, for presenting tonight. Again, it's it's great to reflect on this past year and see how far we have come. Um, and I know this coming year will be completely different yet again. Hopefully, we can provide the support all of the students need to to get back up to speed, so to speak. Although you know, there's no like defined goal where people are is great. If we're seeing progress, that's great. Okay.